and welcome back to Beyond Oasis, where today's lesson is stay to the right. That's how you avoid that ogre and the charging knights. And on this handy little platform down here is another green gem. Stay low to avoid the bats, and we can actually walk across this instead of having to jump down and go all the way around. And we will continue up the mountain, and I'm going to continue moving as fast as I can up these stairs so that ogres don't fall on my head. Except for this one, which I need to get to the crystal behind him to summon shade, so I'm just going to kill him with these running slashes. The reason we need shade will not be apparent until we get to uh, the next area. But for this guy, you can just walk around him to this chest and get yet another green gem. There are going to be lots of gems in this video. Although, to be fair, none of them are truly outrageous. And here we keep running and don't look back. That way you don't have to deal with that ogre. This is one area where shade will come in handy. Because as we start going up here, we need shade to get across to this post. You have to go here even if you're not going for gems, so you gotta have shade. We're going to drop down to the right, and this is one of the easier gems to get. There's one gem to get, which is a tremendous pain in the ass. We're gonna move up, and you see this bridge that's out? You can't do anything with it, you can't jump off of it. It'll become apparent later on what that's for. But now, recognize this area? Yeah, we're all the way back here. I'm going to dismiss Shade. And we're going to go back the way we came. Because there's a crystal that we can get. Unfortunately, it's all the way back at the beginning of the beach cave. Remember that? Yeah, um, I'm going to go ahead and speed this up a little. What's really important is that uh, there's an ice crystal near the beginning of this dungeon, and we're going to use that to summon Shade. Now, with Shade, we're going to run to the entrance, and once we're outside, we're going to head to the right. And there's a post he can grab onto. And this is a tremendous pain in the ass of a black gem to get. Because not only did we have to backtrack all the way there, now we have to backtrack all the way to the exit to this dungeon. This is why most of the people I know who did play through this game just skipped this one gem. Because not only do you have to go all the way back, you have to go all the way back while doing all of the puzzles that you would have to do your first time through. That's a, that includes grabbing all the keys, that includes defeating this gargoyle, that includes setting off all the right switches. Although it does give you an opportunity to go back and pick up some items that might be better than ones you already have in your inventory. Like if you have better SP items, healing items, uh, weapons with more charges on them. And uh, I'll show mercy on that half of a zombie. Anyway, once we get outside of here, there's a kind of hidden area that we can access with shade. But first, this is an opportunity to pick up a gem I forgot about. You throw the bomb down to hit that switch, and that'll get you... Oh, that garlic's actually pretty nice. Three quarters SP and health from that. So I'll swap it out and pick up this red gem which I missed the first time through. Alright, now we're going to head outside. Once we're out there, and this is why I had shade with me, there is a post that you might have seen that was blocked off by a bunch of tree stumps. We're going to use shade to go past the tree stumps and that will lead us to a special area. Although, to get to it, we have to dismiss Shade, because he'll just keep saving us from falling in. And actually, before I go in, I'm going to drop a couple of items and weapons so that I have empty slots in my inventory. 
I'll explain why I'm doing this a little later once you see what's in this next area. Because this while is related to something that caused me to have to re-record this section three times. Once we drop down here, we'll end up at this indoor waterfall of sorts. And when we go down this waterfall, there are a bunch of items we can pick up, including this green gem. And there's a couple of weapons up there. I'm going to stay all the way to the left for this. That looked like a metal bow, but it's not any metal bow. I also got an elixir from this. Always welcome. Keep jumping, otherwise you're going to get washed away with the current. And then you can just run up these stairs. When I'm at the top of the stairs, I'll show you what's special about that bow. Because it's a metal bow. But it's not just a metal bow. It is a metal bow which has infinite ammo. There are infinite weapons in this game. The metal bow is one of them. I believe there's also a sword that has infinite shots on it. And I can't remember what the other ones are. Anyway, we're going to go back down and try to get some more of those items. Specifically, the sword, uh, the gem, and that black mirror looking thing, which is a call for shade. I got rid of my inventory items not just to free up space for this. But there's also a bit of a bug with this area, where if you go in and then try to drop items to pick up items in the fall, you risk having too many sprites on the screen, and that'll cause some of the items to despawn. Like, the first time I did this, I just went to the top of the waterfall, dropped four items, and then went back down. That caused both of the gems to disappear. That caused the infinite ammo metal bow to disappear. And it also gave me a massive headache, having to go back through this multiple times. But now that we've got that figured out, let's go all the way back to that one mountain section. And remember, you are going to need shade for this. Anyway, once we're all the way back here, remember how we went up once we got past this one staircase? Well, now we're going to do something a little different. We're going to head to the left and jump down here. This is where you're supposed to go. And once we get far enough over here, you have the option to despawn shade and switch them out for bow, which I'm going to do for reasons that will be clear later. And now we're in a cutscene. This is where we hand over the large cube to Silver Armlet. And Silver Armlet is true to their word and does give back the princess. Now, the princess is going to eventually be escorted back to the castle. And, for the record, if you try going back to the castle, you won't find the princess anywhere. Yes, I bothered to go back and check. But what's important here is what she gives us after this. She's going to give us our final major inventory item, and it's the Sun's Charm. Now, the Sun Charm restores our SP and HP when we're in sunlight. Quite useful. Now, once this is finished, I made a safety save and cut my recording. Because, what, by the way, this is the other side of that bridge that from before. Once you enter this cave and make it all the way through... There is no turning back. You can't go back for any side quests in any other areas in the game. You are on a straight track toward the end of the game. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is the beginning of the end. In which I am incredibly lazy and let Bo do most of the work for me. Because not only... Oh, by the way, remember what I said about staying right? Applies for this place too. Remember what I said about staying right? It still applies to this place. This is incredibly cheap on my part, but hey, it's also really efficient. 
You can pick up a bow here if you need it. I'm not really going to go for it after I got that infinite metal bow. And wait for the elite knight. I used to fall for that every single time. And speaking of falling for it every single time, it's really hard to get through here without getting hit by a boulder. Now you gotta jump almost as soon as you're in this area. Otherwise, you're gonna get washed away with the tide. Now, the idea is the tide will wash you off the edge of a cliff and you won't be able to take out these tentacle monsters. So what I'm doing is I set up Bo and I'm using his head as an anchor. Shit. I'm using his head as an anchor to prevent me from washing all the way off the cliff. And when I'm standing, I'm going after one of these things. And Bo is going to mostly take care of the other one. Uh, oh, shit, 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 shit. It doesn't work very well, but it does work. If that makes sense. Now, the elixir is useful. Oh! But it's not the only thing I'm here for. Because when you defeat both of these things, you get something else. Can you guess what it is? Starts with a G, ends with an M. It is a blue gem. Now we're going to let the tide wash us off the cliff. And then we'll send us down here, where we deal with some rather slowly spawning enemies. This might be a challenge, but considering the other stuff that I've dealt with, mostly in secret rooms, like the one with the raptor and the flames and all that stuff, this doesn't really seem like much. Now, this part's pretty straightforward, and you have to kill everything, because that's how you spawn the staircase out of here. But once you get to the top of the staircase, there's going to be more enemies up there. You might have noticed that different color guards behave slightly differently, and by that I mean they're faster. Well, these are some of the fastest. So I wanted to immediately get past them so they don't uh, bottleneck me in the staircase. And summon Bo pretty much anywhere. That way you can lead the guards directly into him, and this becomes much easier. And this was just me making absolutely sure that that didn't spawn a chest somewhere. It happens. This room is trickier than it looks because there are three parasitic worms that will come out of the ground. However, I wound up spawning Bo right on top of where one appears. So, two parasitic worms. Now, what I was trying to do here was keep this garlic around long enough, and if it starts to fade away, you can pick it up again, and that'll refresh the timer on it. But, ogres being ogres, I couldn't get back to it in time. It's okay, though. I still have a f fairly well-stocked inventory. And this is a broadsword. I could pick it up, but I think that the items that I have in my inventory are better. And this is be me this is me being incredibly lazy. And yes, killing everything gets you a gem. Seems to be a pattern. Now we've gotta jump over these waterfalls. And as this is happening, we're going to get shot at by wizards. Just keep moving, and now we're kinda cornered. We have to deal with the Elite Knight, and the whole time, this wizard's going to be shooting us in the back. Unless, we can force the Elite Knight all the way to the back, at which point we'll be out of the wizard's range, and he'll stop shooting us. And remember what I said about staying to the right? No problem. You'd think someone in testing would have noticed that. Anyway, quick heal. And we're going to summon Ditto to get rid of this fire. Now we have to be careful moving forward through here because those pill bugs will drop from the ceiling. And an ogre will drop from the ceiling. Because why not? We immediately got back that healing and SP item we used before. We're just going to keep on moving. 
And once we're through here, we're going to get hit by a bomb. Fantastic. But we're actually going to get rid of Ditto and summon Shade with this crystal so that we can get that treasure chest on the other side of the rocks. And I don't know why I bothered summoning a Freet. Well, I do know why, but it's a little premature. Anyway, green gem. Now we're going to get rid of the fire. I mean, no, the ice crystal. I can't talk today. And we can go ahead and bust open this treasure chest, but there's not really a whole lot in my inventory I could swap that out with. So what I ended up doing was dropping the grapes, using this, and then picking the grapes up again. Now, we need bow, so we're going to have to do one room's worth of backtracking. Not really enough for me to speed up the video. And we don't even have to go all the way to that platform. We can summon Bo from here. Hey, the less ogres I have to deal with, the better. And now, once we're at this door, we're not going to go through it immediately. Because, swordsman. All you really have to do is just keep Bo in front of you and you'll be fine. This room can kiss my ass. This is a room that has some... Not that tricky platforming, but it has these sparks that fly around. And when you hit them to try and get rid of them, they will split off into two. They'll have less health, but there's way more of them. Even when you have bow around, chomping on the ones that come near you slash it, it's still a major pain to try and get through this. And the sad thing is we're going to spend more time in here than usual, not just because I kept screwing up these platforming sections, but also because I'm going after gems. Like in here, for example, there will be three ogres that drop from the ceiling. That was close. And once we get rid of all three of these ogres, uh, some treasure chests are going to spawn, and a switch is going to spawn right underneath Bo. How about that placement? Oh, that actually has more atomic bow shots than the one that I had, so I'll pick that up. We also get a green gem. And, oh, HP and SP max. Good thing I have an open item slot. Now, we're not done yet. That switch caused these platforms to start moving. So, now we're going to head south and get this gem. And I have to ride some moving platforms, which means I'll pretty much need to get rid of some of these if I don't want to get bullied off of a platform. <sighs> Again, having bow nearby is both for taking out these sparks and for ensuring that I don't take too many hits. Now, once we're over here, we're going to get on the platform with this ogre. It's tricky getting on it without being hit, but it certainly can be done. Just use a little bit of timing on your charge shots to keep knocking him over. It's not the most time-efficient way to do this, but... It is one of the safer ways to do it. And you get an elixir, too. Problem is, what do I get rid of? Uh, I guess HP and SP. Anyway, now that we have shade, we're going to move south to this section. This isn't particularly difficult to do, it's just kind of time-consuming. Because I'm playing it safe, what I'm doing is I'm letting these things come to me. And then when they're in range, I'm just going to slash at them. In fact, I think I'm going to speed this part up too. There's no sense dragging this out any longer than it has to be. 
I'm talking about the video, not the playthrough. And that is why you have shade. <sighs> There's one more of these. And then we can move on. Now, once we're across this section, we're going to hit the switch and stay back. Those are hyper bombs. And that will lead us here, where we will get a red key. Now, you might be wondering if we could use Shade to get that key from the other side of the platform. And the answer is no. Well, technically, yes and no. Yes, you can use Shade's grab ability uh, to reach across, open the chest, and even drag the key across. But for whatever reason, you can't pick it up. I've tried it, and I wasted many, many minutes trying to get it to work, but it wasn't happening. Now, right now I'm kind of missing Bo for uh, his ability to automatically attack these things when they come in range. But at the same time, I'm just as glad that I have Shade to help me every time I get knocked off the platform. Or when I take an initial hit, too. The thing is, what I'm trying to do here is I keep trying to do the circular slash, but for whatever reason, I can never get it to work. Well, consistently get it to work. Let's put it that way. I'm kind of low on SP. But... I think I'll be okay. Actually, in this area, that uh, pit to the right is lava. What you're supposed to do is, remember the Efreet race where you guide him through by doing those charges? Well, I'm going to charge up my SP so I can do this. We're going to use Shade and Bunny Hop across the lava. His ability to take a hit for us allows us to do that. And then we're just going to use a bomb to light that fire. Bunny Hop back across. And now I'm going to summon a freet. It's just something I prefer to do. Ooh. It's usually not good when they keep giving you this many, like, SP and HP max items. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and use up an Afreet call. But I'm not just going to use the free call. I'm going to set it on the ground and fire my armlet at it. Because that turns it into a weapon. In fact, how many charges does this have? 20 versus 30 for death. Now, you can actually do more overall damage with 30 death slashes than 20 omega slashes. But the damage per Omega Slash is still higher, so I ultimately went short-term on this. I have another for backup anyway, so... Wait, how many uses is this? <laughs> 30, you don't say. Now there are four um, ways to summon your spirits here. And the trick is you're going to hit the middle switch and switches will appear on all four of them. You have to hit the switches in the order that you discover the spirits. So first we got Ditto, then Afrit, then Shade, and then Bow. And doing this opens up the next area. And if you have to heal, do it now with Ditto, because in the next area you can't use spirits. And of course this area is a boss fight. Say hello to the evil eyes, welcome us welcoming us to non-entity. Just think of it as Limbo. 
Now, he says we can't use the armlet's power, but that doesn't mean we can't use the armlet. And in fact, that's what we'll need to do. You can only damage him by hitting his third eye. And we're going to do jump slashes with the Omega Sword. If you get pulled all the way into that vortex that he summoned, it'll freeze you and that'll leave you wide open to getting hit by meteors. But this is what you have to do. You have to shoot him in the eyes with your armlet and then hit the third eye when it opens. Sounds simple enough, but as the fight progresses, his third eye is going to open on its own and you won't be able to damage it because it opens to do that laser beam attack. He also starts summoning vortexes a bit more often. So you have less opportunity to be able to jump uh, jump and hit the third eye. As you can see, even with the Omega Sword, which is the strongest sword in the game, it's just taking down little fractions of health. And I just went ahead and used an HP max item, because there's no sense in using an item that would heal both HP and SP for this fight. He has these little tells that will let you know when he's summoning a vortex. But uh, not much of a tell for when the comets are going to fall. You just got to be aware of the shadows on the ground. Jeez, he does not want to cooperate right now. Whatever, this is actually a relatively simple fight. It's just a matter of being able to avoid uh, mostly the vortex attack. The meteors aren't too hard to avoid. Although, sometimes you can just get knocked around by them repeatedly. Anyway, beating all that, get to the right. Always to the right. And this is going to be it, everyone. No turning back. Next time on Beyond Oasis, we've got the final castle and the final boss.